3,000 kilometers away from Iran, another conflict is brewing at the crossroads of Russia and Europe. You're talking about Ukraine. Russia is being accused of massing troops along Ukraine's eastern border. Moscow calls it an act of deterrence and blames the West for curating this crisis. Kiev, on the other hand, says this is an act of aggression over the likely induction of Ukraine in the NATO. What is the reality? What is the root of this problem? What is their history? And of course, the biggest question of them all, is a war now inevitable? Here's a report. After the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, Ukraine gained independence and its map looked like this. But today, it looks like this. With the Ukrainian peninsula, known as Crimea, controversially annexed by Russia and the Donbas region in the east increasingly under Russian control. This is where the current conflict is brewing. To understand why, let's rewind to last month. On the 26th of March, four Ukrainian soldiers were killed by pro-Russian separatists. The killings contravened a ceasefire brokered in 2020 and ended a year of relative calm. In the 17 days that have followed, the situation has become quite precarious. Thousands of soldiers have descended on the border. So have dozens of tanks and missile launchers. Ukraine calls it an unwarranted provocation against its sovereignty. We clearly understand the scale of Russian military presence next to our border. I would like to specify that the question of war depends only on Putin. Russia calls it escalated hysteria about a mythical threat. Troops are being transported there. Mobilization plans, calls for reservists are being renewed. Ukrainian media is escalating hysteria about the Russian mythical threat, about plans of Moscow attacking Ukraine practically tomorrow. All this is happening at the behest and open support of Western curators of Kyiv. So both Moscow and Kyiv deny stoking up tensions. Then what exactly is happening and why is it happening? The root of the problem is Ukraine's geographical and demographic makeup. As a former Soviet territory, Ukraine is divided between an eastern region with close historical and cultural ties to Russia and the rest of the country which identifies as more Ukrainian than anything else. The East has been the hotbed of rebellion and pro-Russian sentiment. The rebels allegedly receive support from Moscow and have played a key role in keeping the conflict simmering. Since 2014, 13,000 civilians, 4,100 Ukrainian troops and 5,650 pro-Russian separatists have been killed in this conflict. To put an end to it, the Ukrainian government is pushing for a NATO membership. And this is where things get even more complicated. For NATO and Europe, this means influence on another one of Russia's borders. But Moscow views it as an existential threat. It has billions of dollars invested in Ukraine. A large part of Russian oil exports flow through the country. And, of course, there's a sizable population of pro-Russian people who want to secede from Ukraine. The stakes are quite high. The prospects for a solution, quite low. The implications for Europe, quite severe. And reports of a looming Third World War, quite frightening. <laughs> Bureau Report, we own. World is one. We on is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.